Okay, hello out there at Packer Nation, and welcome to episode 39 of the Absolute Packer Podcast, which we are going to call Philbin's Revenge, because unless you live under a rock, uh, the Packers have a new interim head coach, Joe Philbin. So uh, the Packers dispensed of the Falcons' score of 34 to 21. I hope I got that right. I hope so. <laughs> um, but um, 34 yeah, so to Joe- 20. 3420, geez. Well, I was close. Close with no cigar. <laughs> you missed, I never... they, they missed an extra point, I think, on the last touchdown. or Yeah, I think it was the last touchdown. They missed an extra point. And getting the uh, the score right uh, is generally good for people who run a sports podcast, so I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Guessing usually doesn't do, do well. Uh... But, um, yeah, this was, you know, the, the billing of two uh, disappointing teams in the NFC. But, uh, you know, Philbin uh, was obviously the, the offensive coordinator. He was named interim head coach, and he was with McCarthy uh, early in his uh, tenure, in McCarthy's tenure, too, before he went with Miami. So, if anything, it was just to, to check to see, you know, a pulse of the team, how things would go, and uh, hopefully, you know, the Packers could come out and uh, show some life. And, and they did, I think, for the most part. Um, Rodgers threw... Uh, in some of my notes, mental notes, he threw two touchdowns that were dimes. The the one to uh, Devontae Adams, that little back shoulder. And Devo- again, Devontae Adams, man, he is he is coming on strong. I think he had, he's up to 12 touchdowns now. Actually, yeah, no, 12 touchdowns. So he is playing outstanding. Uh, and his chemistry with Rodgers reminds me of uh, Jordy Nelson-esque at this point almost. And he's a better athlete than Jordy Nelson. But uh, threw a dime back shoulder to uh, – to, um, Devontae Adams had a touchdown, and then he threw an absolute in the bucket, a teardrop to uh, Randall Cobb, one of the vintage, what I'll call Aaron Rodgers throws uh, for a touchdown. Um, and in my head, I was kind of going, you know, those are two throws that we know Rodgers can make and he could make all year, but he hasn't been making them for the past few games. And he made them today, you know, so that kind of, uh, that tells you how slim the margin of error is in the NFL number one, but it also mm-hmm. tells you where, where Rogers is at. He can still do it. Um, and they were beautiful plays, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the Falcons, you know, I, I want to say this was, was, this was either their fourth or fifth straight loss or something. And they've been very disappointing. Uh, we got a pick six, Matt Ryan threw one and uh, Brashard Breland, uh, took it back to the house. I think that was the first one of the season. So I don't want to get too, you know, up on this game, but at the same time, it was looking, we wanted some, some positivity and we definitely, uh, we definitely got some and, and the team, you know, Rogers and the rest of the team, they did seem to be more and maybe it's because they know their fate or, you know, whatever. It's just a little more relaxed. Rogers seemed to be, you know, more jovial <laughs> for Rogers the way you could rate it for Rodgers, I guess. And the other thing I noticed um, was when he went in for that slide, I think it was in the second half, it was a long uh, third down conversion. And that Falcon guy came in and popped him pretty good, which I thought was a fine football player or whatever. And then a lot of Rodgers, uh, his offensive linemen and whatnot, people came over and started to, you know, and they start the little scuffle when, when they call it, you know, standing up for the quarterback, whatever you want to call it. But I think as uh, hokey as that sounds, that was kind of good to see. Um, people still doing that. So um, that's kind of my overall take on, on the game. They got to win. They got to win. And uh, apparently uh, they're still mathematically alive for the playoffs. So wouldn't it just be absolutely strange as hell? It'd be twilight zone shit. If they can McCarthy early, they run the table as Roger says, and for whatever and defeat the odds and they make the playoffs. That would be a very interesting end to this season. <laughs> That's all I could say. Playoffs. Really? I, I had to bring it up, baby. Yeah. You know, and I guess the, this is the show of positivity. So let's just go off of that. Uh, no we're doubt. still, we're still in the mix. Um, we have to have a lot of things go right for us. And what I mean by that is we would have to win out and we would need everybody else to lose the majority of the games. So that's where pretty much where we lie. Um, I, I really, I have to agree with you with, uh, the Roger scramble and uh, how he was hit. I think that was a legal hit. Um, it was not a, a dirty hit by any way, shape, or form. He was trying to try to stop him. Um, yep. I love I love the reaction after that. I, I we, the one thing we've been saying all year is this team is showing no emotion. Uh, they they show no, you know. Um, 
Yeah, and they look pretty and, damn lifeless. Right. And and that we saw the life out of this team. Um, I think it first started uh, beginning of the game. I mean, within the first five plays, Joe Philbin, um, you know, uh, has, has two challenges. And I think. Oh, that was such a weird that, how that thing played out. And how it played out. Drive. was Right. <laughs> but I think what he did is I think he it, it just worked out perfectly for him where he kind of saw this as a as a. Uh, um, you know, go to Jesus moment where I'm going to really just set the, the precedent here and I'm going to, I'm going to set the tone and I'm going to tell this team I'm, I'm here fighting for them. And after those plays, I mean, they, you know, Atlanta went down, scored a touchdown, but after that, you could just see this team's energy was completely different, you know? And I, I think the team knew that their coach was there for them. Um, and that makes a huge difference. You know, when, when everybody is pulling for each other's weight and all that kind of stuff and, uh, you know, patting each other on the back and, and, and just being a team player, I think everything just goes much more smoothly. And that seemed to really kind of catapult this team um, throughout the game and obviously at the end of victory. Um, but the, the one thing I, I – I'm not a believer that we're going to make the playoffs. I'll be perfectly honest with you. But what I did come into this game hoping to seek uh, was life. I wanted to see this team just show something that they actually cared, that they actually wanted to be out there on the field. And across the board, I wanted everybody. I wanted Clay Matthews. I wanted Randall Cobb. I wanted everybody to show tremendous effort and support. And I saw that today. Um, and that's a positive uh, going forward here. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to, you know, help us uh, get in the playoffs. I, you know, like I said, I don't think that's going to happen. But what I, I either. But what I really want to see this team uh, do is uh, what they did today, and I have to be very impressed with that. Um, Philbin came in and early in the week got got rid of Winston Moss, uh, the assistant head coach and linebackers coach, pretty much said he didn't fit what we wanted to do around here. Yeah, we'll um, need to talk about all this off the field stuff that they had too. It's freaking it's like a sorority house up there <laughs> with all the right. bickering and finger pointing and weird shit coming out of there. But uh yeah. But it it was good to see. You know, I think uh I think Philbin saw things weren't obviously going as smoothly as they wanted to. And when he was given the authority, you know, first day he got rid of uh, Winston Moss, which I think was many, many years uh, too late. Um, the guy was the epitome of negativity. Um, the epitome of, well, he'd fit right in. Why don't we get him on the show? Well, we could, we could. <laughs> Hell, I'll bring him on as uh, my right hand man. <laughs> God, let's do it. no, no. Let, let's 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 stay on the let's stay Winston on the and Andy here. And Come on, now. Jeremy. Yeah, go the ahead. Positive train. Let's just no, let's no, ride no, that no, train. No. You know, we're five and seven and one, and uh, this was a a well needed victory. I think for not just the team but the fans. Uh, the fans have been through turmoil this year. Um, it's been a really <laughs> tough go of it, um, and uh, it was just good to see something come. Uh, positive uh, towards the end of the year and Christmas coming up. And, you know, I don't know. It just felt like a really good day. It felt like a really good win. And I'm, I'm very happy with, with uh, what transpired. I mean, obviously I'd like to be, um, you know, 10, two or whatever, but we're not, we're five, seven and one. And we can just only move forward with the positives and, and the positives is uh, this team showed some emotion and the, I mean, you know, I think it was the second half of the game. Kenny, or first half, her first half, I think. Kenny Clark went out. We had no. Oh my God! Our yeah. Starting defensive line from the opening day. Were they had no gone. starters. They were all gone. Right. Right. And offensive linemen. We came into the game without Brian Bulaga, without Lane Taylor. Three of five, and they lost. Uh, who was it? Uh... Bell went down. Or was it Bell? Am I right? Yeah, he went down. Bell was hurt last week, but um, McCray went down, and then uh, they brought in Alex Light, who was a rookie free agent that uh, oh. played for a few snaps for McCray. Injuries, injuries and the Packers go hand in hand. I mean, every every team in the league, as we know, has injuries, but, geez, the Packers, it's just – maybe it just seems that way, but, Jesus Christ, they just – they get hammered. Pretty soon they're going to be taking cornerbacks, putting them in as offensive linemen, <laughs> or God knows what. They, they were almost at a position where they were going to have to take guys – out of that who weren't you know they're were gonna have to use defensive linemen on the offensive line or, or vice versa that's right. crazy shit but that's hell that's the state of the team um right yeah and, and they brought um they picked up a, a defensive lineman uh earlier this week fidel brown who they uh, uh the, the raiders waived uh they picked him up he was active today james looney uh, the, who the Packers. if you get, if you get waived by the raiders who i don't know 
Right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, James Looney was inactive today. Uh, so in essence, they only had um, truly four defensive linemen coming into the game. Yeah. Uh, so they were perilously thin there. And then when Kenny Clark went down, it was like, oh, shit. Um, you know, do we have to bring in uh, Alex Light, who's an offensive lineman, to play defensive line? I mean, you, wow. you were right. They were that close to actually just bringing in a body uh, just to take up a spot there. Um, and, and Atlanta was, I mean, as soon as McCray went, or excuse me, when Kenny Clark went down, they were running the ball at us night and day. And I, what better way to attack a defense that's decimated by injuries by just pounding the ball down their throat? And they did. Yeah, I mean, you can you know? see. I mean, what and what were we going to do when you see that? You're like, why can't? There was no way you could have stopped that. So right, right. And I mean, you know, considering coming out of that game with the injuries that we came in and what we left with, I mean, they only rushed 107 yards on us. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was going to be significantly worse than that, especially with how the holes were just opening up for them. But, you know, they Atlanta killed themselves. They had 13 penalties for 101 yards, two turnovers. Uh, you know, they were their own worst. Enemy. Yeah, Atlanta played like shit. I mean, the Packers played pretty well. They put up, well, they had a pick six, so they put up, what was it, 28 um, offense or something like that. Um but like I said, I, Rogers, you know, the offense was a quick hitter, you know, quick hitting coming out. Um, and it wasn't, you know, throw the ball down the field all the damn time. It was nice to see that. Um, but then I'll tell you what. So, you know, I, was I surprised to see that? Not really. They did a couple of little things to at least get the tempo up. Um, and since you have Philbin, he wants to try some different stuff. But uh, I'll tell you what just continues to destroy this team. Third down on offense. If you want to get this team off the field, just get them in third down. Third and short, third and long, third and medium, third and whatever. My goodness. it's Rogers. It looks like Rogers gets sacked on 75% of the third downs. He's not even throwing away or incomplete. He's getting sacked. There is nobody getting open or doing anything on third down. That shit has got to be taken care of in the offseason because well, – just so you know, Andy, this game, they were 7 for 13 on third down, which is, I think, the tops on the year. So they actually had a very solid game on third down. Um, they actually ran the ball on one and got a first down with Aaron Jones. So uh, all things that we haven't seen all year, uh, they, you know, they produced over 50% of the third down percentage. They actually ran one for first down. Um, but you're, you're, you're so right. I mean, and where they need to improve upon that in the offseason is getting a better offensive line and getting um, – you know, blocking tight ends because Jimmy Graham is obviously. Oh my God. Down. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Ugh, Graham. I hate to see Graham is Graham's a bust. Let's call him what he is. I mean, they well, have him, I, they I have him say... blocking way too much. Right. I don't know. And maybe because they have to, I guess. But other than that, it's like that guy, if they brought him in here to thinking that he was going to be 50% blocking, 50% receiving, that's freaking stupid. He is yeah. not a blocking tight end. That's like asking Jermichael Finley to block. That boy was sent out there to, you know, Go down the middle, stretch the middle of the field, and catch balls. But Jimmy Graham's falling off the map. You know, he's hit his, he's hit the wall, so to say. So to say. Um, geez. Well, and where I've watched him has been on, you know, basically when the play breaks down. Uh, I I don't see a lot of effort from him, and I'm not, nope. I'm not sure about his past history if he was. Uh, uh, active in those moments but I mean, for what i'm seeing I, i'm not seeing good effort and i don't know if if that's true or not and maybe people that have seen jimmy graham in his new orleans days or in his seattle days could speak more to that i don't know but to me i the effort's lacking there um it's not so much that i mean there was actually a clip from last week's game um that somebody on twitter posted i saw uh, it it was it was uh, like this is horrendous effort and i think right. it was just him blocking and it was like three different plays of him blocking and it was basically him just olaying everything he wasn't even right tempting yeah it was it was pretty embarrassing you know so i i would be really shocked if we keep, uh, keep him next year um i i we really need to do a lot better there um you know, I don't know who that answer is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be for agency to draft. Um, or tell us Bennett. He's available. Jared Cook will be available. <laughs> he will be. The Ravens. I t- well, I'm saying, up. I take uh, I take Jared Cook, but uh, or tell us Bennett. New, 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 new. <laughs> no, he, that, he that was a joke by one Andy papers. here. Okay, sorry. Oh, he is. Some of the shit I've seen him say about Green Bay, my goodness. I mean, I was in a coma and I don't remember much about it, but – um man did he leave on bad terms i didn't realize he is he's quite a turd i didn't realize the level of turd he was but i don't want to steer the steer the show on the martellus bennett yeah, but that's that's come and gone yeah no doubt um so let's see i mean so you know game wise the big picture i would have been concerned if they got blown out 
you know, if they kept it close but lost, I would have been like, hey, whatever. But if they got blown out, that would have been pretty bad. The fact that they won pretty decisively, I don't think you can read too much into it other than the fact that it's a good thing. You know, it's that's about what it is. It is what it is. Um, but with that said, I think there's plenty to talk about off the field. And you can start with Mike McCarthy getting canned. What did you guys think about that um, when you heard that happen? Shocked. Uh purely shocked but uh, you know i i think if i think we all said if and i think i said to you guys as uh maybe a day or two before or maybe it was during the game i don't know uh i said if if they lose against arizona mike mccarthy will be gone tomorrow um you know and i didn't think that that was going to truly happen but i just had a, a just this weird premonition that it was going to and it did uh no it, it didn't have it wasn't gone tomorrow he was gone 20 minutes after <laughs> the game was done <laughs> let's be right, real on that right um <laughs> So, yeah, oh, I hear something. Wow. What is Sorry it? about that. That was me. Um, I was on ESPN and uh, an ad played. But uh, yeah, so it, you were I, on ESPN. Who's interviewing you? <laughs> yeah. nice. Nice. I as, long as, they, as long as they give us money for it, it's fine. I, I'm nice. trying to get them to sponsor us. So, yeah, nice. yeah, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Nice. So yeah, I, uh, I, I want to I want to just jump in real quick. Uh, so I was immediately shocked, but then relieved. Yes. Oh, when McCarthy got fired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, I was I would say I was shocked, too. And I mean, it sounds like all of us were collectively shocked because it happened midseason. You know, I just I didn't see that coming. I even if they got even if they lost all the rest of their games or whatever, I didn't think they would fire him before the end of the season number one the Packers just don't do that it's right. you know it's just it's not, what, not, not what most teams do but so when it happened I, yeah I was surprised and I sat back and I went you know and we're under a new regime here we got the we got the Murphy Gutekunst Russ Ball triangle of authority no longer quadrilateral authority I guess <laughs> but um so we're, we're in uncharted waters here but um it, it, it leads you to believe that you know this wasn't just some I mean, obviously, had they beat Arizona, I don't think he would have been fired. But this had been brewing where that if they said, OK, if he does lose, he's gone. I don't I don't see it as a more of a I don't see it as much of a gut reaction, so to speak. So uh, they really wanted to move on from McCarthy because technically we and again, no playoffs are coming. Let's make that clear. But you're not even technically, quote, out of the playoffs, but you still can't. It, it's just odd. You know what I mean? I just, so they really wanted him gone. Um, and it, it just, it just reeks of the whole, you know, we, we, we fired Dom Capers, we bring in Gutekunst, but we keep McCarthy. It was all just, it was handled poorly and it did not really surprise me with Murphy at the, Murphy at the helm. I, I hate to say it. Um, it. You could almost see this coming, you know, and then I didn't quite remember, but I, I learned that, uh, uh, Murphy was in on the hiring of Gutekunst, apparently as a GM, and they were. Uh, uh, Mark Murphy was going to hire Russ Ball as the GM. Was that right? He was thinking about it. Oh my God, that's that's somebody who has had concerning. no experience. Concerning, no experience with player personnel. He's only had experience pretty he's much negotiating counter. contracts. Yeah. And I'm sure he's I'm sure he's great at negotiating contracts and all that stuff, but you do not give the GM role to someone like that. I mean, who knows if that was really true, but I, that's why I heard, you know, it came out that McCarthy was like, no, 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 you don't want Ball because he's just going to be Ted only worse. He's Ted minus being a scout, which is even more troubling. So I don't know where the hell this new quote unquote regime is going to go. And people are saying. You know, Philbin is doing his, his auditioning for the, the job like hell. If they if they hire, I have said this, if they hire Philbin after this, I may become a Bear fan. And that's that could be uh, that could be a problem. As wow. we know. <laughs> wow. Obviously, I'm just kidding, but I, I had to at least put uh, the thread of it out there. Um, so you know go, go ahead. ahead. Go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to go completely off topic. So keep keep it on topic. Oh, um. Yeah, the other. I mean, what did you guys think of the press conference with uh, with Murphy and Gutekunst? It's uh, fine. They're, they're in suits. <laughs> <laughs> they they were wearing pants at least. They didn't come out yeah. naked. It's just um, they, they. I don't know because I mean we're used to seeing uh, not press conferences from them, right? So yeah. like they, they come out and they're very official. It felt like they were announcing their uh, senatorial run or something. <laughs> nice. You know, I'll say this: it was it was better than what I 
thought it was going to be, but yeah. I was talking, I was talking to my dad and he made a good point that, um, you know, and who knows, but everybody's making a big deal about the structure as, as often I do the quadrilateral now triangle of authority. But if you, if you, and this is where we'll have to, you know, give Murphy some time to see if he really does it. But if he has a football mind and he wants to get more involved and maybe it isn't so bad in that, you know, don't get so uh, caught up on the structure, get caught up that, you know, you're, you've got more communication going on. That's kind of one of the positive ways to look at it, I guess. But from what I've seen so far, I'm not liking the returns. Um, so I don't know. I like Gutekunst, but, um, you know, this, uh, I keep saying, you know, we're, we're just not going to know much right now, especially right now with every, with all the people going on. You're not going to be able to hire your new coach till the end of the season and all that stuff and find out what, uh, lot of you, there'll be even more roster turnover. We got the, the draft. We have lots of good draft picks. So the next year is really going to be telling, but there, Murphy has not made a lot of what I would call sound decisions at this point. It's it's hard to to look at him and say, okay, I love where he's taking the franchise because right now I just don't. Yeah, I mean we've been in a tough spot all season. That's what we've been saying. And he put it. But, he put him in that tough spot. You know, right, he right. did it. We'll give McCarthy. We'll, we'll give McCarthy one more year. We'll get, we'll get rid of get rid of half his coaching staff. We'll hire a GM that he kind of wants. With it. It, it just reeked of of half assery <laughs> i don't know what else to say you know it you know I, th I think like i was throwing numbers around but I, I you know i feel pretty secure in saying that um that and i think it flows through the whole organization not just what's on the field it's 30 percent talent 30 percent attitude 30 percent luck you know i mean we did mm -hmm. we did lose a lot we did lose a few close ones this season and mm -hmm. those goes the other way the, the the entire conversation is different and of course that you know that ha that's true of any team just mm -hmm. like uh, you said about the injuries um but uh i feel like if if Philbin pulls out a win next week against the Bears and it's kind of a decisive win, I think you'd have a hard time arguing against him sticking around. Mm -hmm. Being the next coach? Yeah. Uh, I'll pretend what if you didn't he, say what, that. What, what, hey. what, if, what, if he, what if we come out and he has a decisive win next week, really? I mean, how? What? What? what is the reasoning behind not giving him the shot? Like, who would you pick it instead? Everybody else is a maybe, too. Well, I'll look, okay. I mean, I guess it's a fair, fair question because if they are playing better under him, sure. But I look at Philbin and I go, well, you know, he basically he's still a guy who runs McCarthy's scheme, right? Everybody hates McCarthy's scheme. Um, they want a new scheme. They want someone younger. Um, and truth be told, what the hell did the guy? What was his his title? Was what often was he the offensive coordinator? Mm -hmm. But what did he? What did he do? They had so many cooks in the kitchens. I don't even know what the hell he did. They had, you know, passing game coordinator. They had uh, football cleat holder coordinator. They had, they had all these different titles. And I look at that and I go, and it seemed very, you know, you know, kind of a good old boy thing with Philbin. And I mean, I love the guy. You know, I'm sure he's great. He was here when Rodgers was going crazy in 2011 and all that stuff. But. He had a stint as a head coach, and he didn't do very well, and he presided over, what, the bullying scandal, and what else? There were, like, two scandals that were happening in Miami. It wasn't very pretty. Um, so his he doesn't have a huge track record, but he, he looks like more of the same. Um, and I don't know if the answer is someone younger. I don't know if the someone is, you know, the answer is someone from college, but I, I would like to see somebody who – is new and completely outside of the organization. I'll say that. Maybe that's the best way to put it because Philbin is still has all these ties to the organization, has ties to McCarthy directly, has ties to the offense that people so, you know, throw under the bus all the time. So, again, you know, it's hard to say if, if the team runs the table and even and wins big. I don't think that <sighs> – Okay, let me ask you this. Go ahead. Did we go into this game thinking the Packers were going to win today? No. Amongst the three of us? No. Nope. Elliot? Nope. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. Nope. So all three of us thought we were going to lose today, and we won a game rather handedly, okay? Mm -hmm. This team showed something that we haven't seen all year long. I mean, they actually showed team unity. They showed, you know, they, like I said, all the emotional stuff. If they go out and win the rest of their three games and end the year at 8-7-1, and this team is showing that they're playing for the coach, 
I'm not making the argument either way. I'm just making this argument that if they show they're playing for this coach, why would you go and hire anybody else? That's a fair question. And how I would answer that too is this. So while you were asking that question, I was thinking, so everybody else on the staff is McCarthy related, right? Everybody. Um, so you basically have somebody, I don't want to say he's McCarthy 2.0, Philbin. This is the thing that, that's somewhat unknown, you know, but um, he's directly tied to him. The rest of the staff is tied to McCarthy. I mean, Petten and all that is, is, is one thing. I'll, I'll stick to offense, basically what I'm saying. So it, it, would, it would seem to be the simple thing, the easy thing, the conservative thing, the, you know, let's keep continuity thing, which I'm sick and tired of is kind of where I'm getting at. Um, and again, Philbin, it's not his fault he's in the position he's in, right? But everybody else on that, all they did is fire McCarthy. They didn't fire the rest. Well, they did fire Winston Moss. I, I don't, that's another unknown. What, what, how big of an influence was Winston Moss? Linebackers coach, linebackers had been good. So I'm glad they got, they got rid of him, I guess. But um, so, you know, as I, as I'm thinking about it though, and just talking to, I mean, maybe the, the quote unquote culture change could be that big. I'd be, I'd be stunned if that's what it is because Philbin is directly tied to McCarthy and has been. He used to work for him, left, got fired, and came back. Those are the kind of things I don't want to see. I'd like to see this this franchise do something um, more, I don't want to say drastic, and I don't want to say risky, because this hire has to be right. You know, it really does, obviously. Right. Um, well, let, me, let, me throw something else, let me throw something else at you, then. Did today's game, you know, led by Joe Philbin, uh, have any McCarthyism tied to how this team performed today? Any relation to any other game this year? Was this the best game that the Packers have played all year? Top, I mean, from first quarter to the fourth quarter, from the start to the end, is this the best game that they played? And how do you tie Philbin just to, just to the fact that he was, you know, under McCarthy and has been with him for many years? Uh, how do you tie him? to McCarthy when this team played nothing like a McCarthy team of this year? That's a fair question. Um, I'll say this. Uh, Atlanta is not a good team. I think that's plain as day. Um, they're very disappointing. They're supposed to be better. I mean, they're coming in. They're playing on, you know, they're a, they're a dome team in warm weather. They're coming here playing in the cold, whatever. Um, but they played like shit. I don't know what that is. So the quality of your opponent is is one thing. Um, now the Packers didn't, you know, they lost to the fricking Arizona Cardinals. I get that too. Um, so, you know, the, the iceberg as I'll call it, you know, what the, did, did they, the surface of McCarthy was, did they cut off the, the big thing where there's still a lot underneath or was he really the thing holding back? I'd be surprised if that's the only thing, you know what, you know what I mean? And it, and those are the things we just don't know. I mean, they did play a good game. Um, but just because you, play a good game against a, a shitty opponent and that's what the Falcons are they, they just are um, I, I'll, I'll give some credit but I'm not going to be jumping you know jumping up for joy over that and they still had problems on third down and I mean some of the offense was a little better and again I think this is really key actually uh, I don't know if I uh, I think Ellie and I were talking about this before we before you came on but there were two throws today by Rodgers the touchdown to Adams the back shoulder touchdown to him Fantastic throw, and it was a touchdown, obviously. Mm -hmm. And the dime he threw to Cobb in the bucket for that touchdown. Those were two vintage Aaron Rodgers throws that he that he made today, right? And they both resulted in touchdowns, so they're directly fourteen points. You could right almost there. say they were old. They were old, reliable. Yeah, so. and where I'm going with that is for for Jeremy here is you know those are throws he has not been making much this year, um, but he happened to make them today. Now, did he make them today because it's a new era and you know Philbin's there who the hell knows I think he just made them because he made them you know if he didn't make those two throws they don't have 14 points and they probably don't win this game plus you got the pick six so that's one thing I was kind of thinking of too is he happened to make the vintage Aaron Rodgers throws when he was supposed to and did he do that because he felt looser um do you know what I mean those two throws, I'm thinking, he used to make them in sleep. He hasn't been making any of them this year. Um, so it's hard to know. It's hard to know. 
But I, I think if you break things down into those those thirty percent buckets, they had all all three of those things going on today. You sure. know, they, they were they're they're sure. playing to their talent. They had the right attitude for once. I think that was the really big thing missing. And and they had a, they had some luck, not perfect luck. I mean, there were some bad calls too. So uh, I, I I feel like it, it, I mean the win almost could have been more. Uh, it was very decisive. It was the best they played all season. Yep. And and, you know, uh, we all like have this pie in the sky. Let's get a young coach like the Rams have. But we have a veteran quarterback. And I mean, maybe that's when you want that young coach. But boy, I don't think so. Yeah, that, that's a, you bring up a good point. I mean, I'm not saying that the young hot coach out of college or whatever is the answer, because that is a big risk. Um, yeah. You know, the. Maybe maybe it's what I'm saying is the safe thing to do would be to hire Philbin, and we're all getting ahead of ourselves because they may go one and three, you know. It, but if he goes sure. four no, or if he goes to, you know, what I mean three and one, and every, everything looks really good. Well, that's why I'm saying next week against the Bears because we have the yeah. Bears, then the Jets, then the Lions, and yeah. like whatever, we'll know if the season means anything, which it probably will not anyway, right? By the time we roll around to the Jets and the Lions, so those could be throwaway games. Maybe we don't even have starters in, you know, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I think I think the win next week is is humongous. Uh, could not be for, not for playoffs, but just for the idea of the idea of the playoffs. <laughs> you know, nice. just for the just, yeah. just for uh, the the thought that it could be kept alive and that we're going in on sure footing for next year. That's true. That's true. You know, it's interesting. I mean. The two, when you say the best game they played this this uh, season, I guess collectively it could be. Um, and I'm what I'm doing is I'm going back to two games that they played really really well but didn't win. And the Ram game they played was freaking phenomenal on the road against yeah. basically at that time the best team in the league, yep. and they didn't win it because dipshit McGee took it out of the the end zone. And there's I mean but but the the but there is you know about uh, Montgomery was. That might have been a crack in, you know, uh, McCarthy's armor because he was all fed up about McCarthy, Montgomery. So, you know, is there something to do with that? Sure. But McCarthy coached a really good game and they played a really good game, but it's about the best team in the league then. But they, they botched it at the end by a stupid decision by a player. But I, And then they went to New England and they had everything going for them. And, you know, they kind of crumbled at the end. It was a fumble. You know, by what was it? Uh, I think it was Aaron Jones, but he he coached really well, and they played pretty well in that game too. At New England, remember these were at New England and at um, so they were on the road, and the road record is they still won on the road for Pete's sake. But I think about that, and I go, well, you know, they weren't the best coached or the best, play, but they played pretty damn well on the road, which has been their Achilles' heel. So I'm trying to kind of play out all this stuff to say that that this was their best game overall. It's tough to say because I would almost say I'd be hard. I, I'd go on a limb and say the Ram game was their best game and Ty Montgomery screwed him up. Yeah, Ty Montgomery. Hard, it's, it's hard to say that, but Ty Montgomery. Um, that's that's that thirty percent of attitude, though, right? And, if, and you, if yeah, that's true. Is it, no, is it, is his attitude? I mean, they they got rid of him, you know. Obviously, after that. Now you're saying his attitude was it attitude towards the coach? Was it just his attitude in general, or I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I hear you. I, I will say the Ram game, as as well as we played, the Rams did not play well. And I don't think they had – I don't think – I think they played up to their competition. And what I mean by that is – You mean I, down to their competition? Yeah, there you go. That's a better way of saying it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't think they really came into the game real spirited or real emotional. I just think they kind of rolled with the punches. You know, it was nothing. Uh, if you read a lot of uh, publications in Ramland, uh, they were saying the same thing that all of their um, uh sport writers and all of that were saying, you know, this was a whole hum game and, and the Rams really didn't look like they wanted to come out and be here. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of buy that, but I also look at it as like, it literally is true for the most part in any given Sunday the margin for error in this, in this game is, is so small and the teams that really are that good. Um, they're good for, you know, variety of reasons. And oops, that's my alarm to take my meds. Excuse me. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, let, let me throw this past you, though. I mean, we, we, you know, during the year, whenever we've had our backs against the wall, whenever somebody has thrown the first punch at us, we have not responded with anything. Yeah, we have, we have well. wilted basically. Every so time. this year, or this game, excuse me, we started out the game and we had two controversial plays, which Philbin called um, for reviews, and they were they were rejected. And the Rams went down, scored the very first touchdown of the game. Mm-hmm. They did not score a touchdown until the fourth quarter of After the that. game. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we had our backs against the wall right up on uh, right up right from the get go. And we surround or we um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, we came back and we had a 20 to seven lead at halftime and mm. then it came in the second half and we were up 34 to seven and the game was done. Mm. Uh, so how many times this year has this team responded with any ferocity like they had, like they did today? Um, there's no game that besides a Chicago game, uh, the second half, Yeah, no doubt. Um, there's no game that can really say that we actually came back and we threw the next punch and we kept on throwing punches, you know, it's, I agree. No, I agree. It's, it's just, this was a game that was completely we, different from any other game this year. We really, there were a lot of games in the fourth quarter, especially that, that road stretch where we were in it and or winning and we just shit the bed every time, basically. Right. How much of that, and I'm, I'm thinking in my head, how much of that is coaching? How much of that was the defense again? It is kind of a, a combination of a lot of things. Um, but kind of bottling this all this up, in my opinion, I mean, it, they wanted McCarthy gone. It, even, again, he lost to the, basically the worst team in the league, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. But for the Packers to do that, so I kind of where I'm going, I'm just thinking about this in my head in real time is, Maybe McCarthy, as you know, he's he's the head of the whole shoot match of the, of the thing. Maybe he was that. I don't know. Maybe a lot of what they write in the papers was true. Maybe what uh, he was doing with Rodgers was they had like this little pissing match about who would call plays and who would do this. And maybe his attitude. Maybe he wasn't a guy who would trade a Ty Montgomery, um, even though he he did what he did. You know, you know, maybe Gutekunst forced his hand. Same with Haha Clinton Dix. Same with um, Whitehead. You know. Is that were those things that McCarthy did have want no, didn't want any part of, and they had to force his hand? But at the same time, there's all this like chicken and the egg stuff because they traded away these players. They weren't all that good, but the team didn't have much talent to begin with, you know. No, so it's I like can't. so it's like where did so did McCarthy do what he could? But long story short, they wanted him gone. The fact that they fired him after that, I really was like, wow, they did want him gone. So maybe the culture really went in the shitter from the first game to the Arizona game. And they're like, we got to cut this off now, you know? So maybe Philbin could be a possibility. I would be surprised and I wouldn't say I'd be really enthusiastic about it, but um, who knows, you know? Here's an interesting stat. Uh, according to ESPN stats and information today, uh, Aaron Rodgers went five for six for 70 yards and a touchdown on third down. And he also, <gasps> he also scrambled twice for 23 yards and a pair of first downs. In That's the, a misprint. I don't in, believe it. In the previous, <laughs> in the previous six games, Rodgers completed 44% of his third down passes with one TD and two rushing first downs. Two. That that um that stat about today about or that you just gave me about because uh, he got sacked on third down at least three or four times again did he not or am I just misremembering that he got sacked four times today but I think only one or two was on third down okay it, I, it could have literally just been in my head right it seems like every time he gets sacked on on third down Yeesh. I don't know. Yeah. Right now, the Packers have a 6% chance of reaching the playoffs, according to <laughs> FPI projections. You had to throw that in there, didn't you? Hey, that's how we were in 2010 as well. We were sitting there at 8-6, uh, and I think we had less than a 15% chance to make the playoffs. We had everything to fall our way, and we won the Super Bowl. Could you imagine if they got the in the Bowl. playoffs and they freaking won the Super Bowl <laughs> with Joe Philbin? Could you imagine uh, that? Okay, you know what? It's a stretch to say we're going to hit the playoffs. You're, I know. You're Look taking what we're things doing here. I know. Look <laughs> what we're doing here. I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, that would be some shit right there. That would be, whoa, boy. You know the part that really, there was two things today that really got to me. Uh, the first one was right before halftime, you know, when Roger scrambled, uh, had the big uh, first down scramble, and then um, the team got really you know, rambunctious over it and uh, got mm-hmm. involved into a melee. 
Deion Jones, uh, the linebacker from the Atlanta Falcons. If you guys watch this play real closely. Okay, he, he jumped threw, on somebody's back. He jumped on Lucas Patrick's, Lucas Patrick's back, but he also threw a punch at either Equinemius St. Brown, and I, I can't remember the other lineman that was kind of standing there. He threw a punch and mm-hmm. hit them in the face or the helmet. Now, the NFL rule states if you throw a punch, it's automatic ejection. So – if we want to talk about the refs, actually, the officiating was today. horrific today. Those, um, those two flags that uh, Philbin threw, those he should have won both challenges. Well, <laughs> definitely the bad. first one. Definitely the first one. Where I think no, both he had no, he had no just, possession of that ball. Right. Uh, the second one was really tough because you could see that his. You know, his his foot kind of grazed the grass before it got yeah. to the sidelines. That one was right. really – there was no conclusive evidence that could have overturned that. Here's but a the question. One, the, the, was it the first one that shouldn't have been a catch? I think it's, that's what we're talking about. Yes, yes. How in God's green earth – they still don't know what a fucking catch is in this league. Oh. They still right. don't. I mean, come on. They bring on that Dean Blandino, and he's like, uh, uh, this is not a catch. What's going on? And I'm just going – <laughs> that that's why D Blandino got out of the NFL though. I mean, he won't come out and say this, but he got away because he knew that these rules were setting them up to fail and he wanted no part of it. So he's happy to be, you know, with the fork, the, the Fox sports crew and yeah. to give his take on each call. But that play, there was, you have to, you have to have two steps and a football move and possession. I love that term, football move. Yeah, football move, <laughs> seriously. But there, th- none of that happened on that play. So, And it was conclusive. I mean, I'm not just saying this because I'm a Packer fan. I'm saying this because that is the definition of the rule. And so that, how did they overturn, or how did they apply it? That's why, no again, clue. they're on the take, baby. I have no clue. They, mm-hmm. they would have to answer that, but I, it, was, it was a joke to me. Yeah. Um, the second play that concerned me, was at 222 in the second quarter. The Packers were first and 10. Um, Jimmy Graham, if you watch the play, and maybe uh-huh. I'll post this on our APP page later tonight, but I did record this. Jimmy Graham was on the left side of the line of scrimmage, or on the left side of the scrimmage, and he came in motion, and he had number 54, a linebacker, on him. And he ran a crossing route over the middle of the field. Now, to me, it looks like I'd have to see the broad spectrum of the the field and what transpired there. But to me, it looked like Jimmy Grant had an obvious mismatch and it should have had an obvious uh, catch. Mm-hmm. But and and Rodgers didn't throw it to him, and he threw it to the left and almost got picked off when he tried to throw it to Jamal Williams. Oh, that, that was the pick. Six. That should have been a pick six. Right. Yeah, yeah. Go back and watch that play. I, I would like to see the – and I'm hoping somebody can post it later tonight or I can find a clip of this play. But um, Graham, to me, looked wide open, and he had an obvious mismatch. And, uh, you know, that's the part of this team that still just bugs me is that when we have a mismatch, we have to take advantage of it. But we just don't have guys that can do that. Well, yeah. here's the other thing, too. Yeah, to your point, it's like every now and then they go, so-and-so was wide open, so-and-so was wide open. It's like you get the feeling that Rodgers is not throwing much to Jimmy Graham, even when he's wide open, because Jimmy Graham stinks. He's he's dropping a lot of shit. He's got the busted thumb. He's got a poor attitude. He, I, I wouldn't put it past him. He's not throwing to Jimmy Graham because he doesn't like Jimmy Graham. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I was just thinking about that. I'm just like, he's probably not doing that. Now, there's other times where he finally, finally today, I can't remember which play it was, and it was on, I believe it was either, it might have been a third down. It was a third down. Um, he threw a check down to Aaron Jones and got like 15 yards. It mm-hmm. was beautiful. It was mm-hmm. just like just like I thought yeah, it would I, be if he actually it, did it. <laughs> friends opened up and rejoiced. It was, yeah, no that kidding. Was, that it was, was probably was the only one he did, but I'm like, you know, I was like, holy cow, he actually did it. So. Yeah, he, he definitely needs to do more of that. And, you know, even though the Falcons didn't play that great and the Packers did play better, he still needs to get rid of the ball faster. I mean, offensive lines fault or not, there were some times when I'm, if they're all coming after you, there has to be someone for you to throw to. You're breaking up a little bit, buddy. I, I, just, I can yeah. hear you, but you're breaking up a little bit. Keep going. Uh, okay. Uh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, that's my whole speech. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll say this. Um, I mean, the offensive line, it's execution, all these, you know, all these things are contributing to the offensive woes, but a big part of it is the offensive line stinks. The entire right side is just trash. And I mean, if you're expecting, you know, second and third string guys to come in there and, and have the offensive line play 
like their starters, that ain't going to happen. And one thing that McCarthy did, and I don't know if um, Philbin will do or whatnot, but he never gives his offensive line any help, like ever. No. And they, their right side of their offensive line basically the whole year has needed – Maybe not help all the time, but many of the times they needed some help, and that's not helping Rodgers either. I mean, so obviously, like other people say, when a quarterback, the worst thing a quarterback can do is look down at the rush. They have to keep their eyes open down the field, stand tall, and throw a dart. And Rodgers, when he's had a good offensive line, has never looked down at the rush. He's looking down at the rush big time. But how can you blame him? Because he goes, hut, and somebody's in his lap in 0.5 seconds. Uh So it happens to the best of the quarterbacks. Um, so they need they they need a, an overhaul on the right side of the line. They need big help on the line, and and you know we're talking about how the protection broke down so much this year. Do you, do do you realize Rogers broke the NFL INT record today? He had over that is insane. Three hundred and fifty eight passes without an interception. Yeah. He broke Tom Brady's record the today. Yeah. That's crazy. All the troubles that this offense has had, all the issues that we have had. The, I mean, we could go down the litany of issues this offense has had, and he's thrown one pick, and he broke the iron or the uh, most consecutive throws without an interception today. Lovely. But and he almost threw that pick six with. He almost threw that pick six with like two passes left to break the record. <laughs> Did you see? That? Right. Right. That was funny. But yeah, I mean, how many? That, I mean, it's obviously it's outstanding. I don't know how many touchdowns he has this year. And I th- probably like what twenty-one or twenty-two. Twenty-one. Interception. Okay, so he's obviously he's he is not throwing ints. It's fantastic, but keep in mind too, he does not take chances. Number one and number two, he is throwing the ball away at a crazy rate. So there is this. I don't want to say give and take. Look, he's it's outstanding, and it's it's obviously incredible that he can do that but if the context of it i'm sure if you compared brady's like 300 whatever throws to rogers i'd love to know side by side how many brady had when he was doing real damage with the offense versus rogers throwing the ball away or you know what i mean well so far like we that. lead the league in throwaways at 55 oh i'm sure yeah we by a lot league. i think 55 so far jeez so I, Rogers well, on, the, does, on the call, they said nobody else had over 30. That, <laughs> fuck, are you serious? Yeah. That's insane. I mean, Rod, the other, that's the other thing. Rogers does not want to take chances. Will he, though? Yeah. Meaning, I don't mean just the, end, the rest of this year, because, you know, he always says, I don't care about stats. I care about winning. That's a bunch of bullshit. He's not stupid. He knows his stats. He knows this, that, and the other. <laughs> and if you're not going anywhere as a team, you know, he's got even more incentive. That's all you got to play for. Exactly. So <clears throat> you wonder about that, you know. But maybe in in the latter part of his career, he'll start taking more chances. Oh, that reminds me. Did you guys um see that video I sent you from YouTube a couple of days ago that uh, broke down the whole um, – we should post that to the APP page. I can't remember exactly who did it, but it was like a 20-minute long video that broke down the, the Packers offense, and it was – you know, I was expecting it to be, you know, McCarthy, McCarthy, McCarthy. And it was mostly the offense, but it was – this guy talked about so many different things, and he compared the, the Packers' offense and scheme and everything directly to New England, and it was even more eye-opening than I thought. Hmm. Unbelievable. I think I sent it to you guys, but um, I'll send it to you again. It was just – it was crazy. Um, so – so let's see. Um, what else are we looking for? I guess uh, for next week and rest of the year and, and all that good stuff. Uh, <laughs> keeping keeping the tone that was set today. Um, you know, I I think if let's say we win out here and uh, you know, like Elliot said, we we win in, in Chicago handedly and we beat the Jets and we beat Detroit at home. Um, where does this team stand at the end of the year? Mm-hmm. Uh, you're in a full-blown controversy because I don't know how Philbin could not be considered uh, one of the candidates to lead this team in 2019 and beyond. I, truly, uh, because yeah, the you know, more I we'll, think about it, I, I guess I could see that. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how things play out here. I mean, this is one game today. We, you know, we're all excited because we actually played a full four quarters and we actually looked good. Um, I'm on that high too, you know, because I haven't seen it all year. Um, we saw it today, uh, but let's say they do. Let's say they do win out and they. And 
and they go down to Chicago next week and uh, win handedly down there. Um, <laughs> it, it leaves a lot of uh, question marks. It, it truly does because I, I I'm on the the, the belief. It as also well. almost looks like, and I mean I hate to say this, but it almost looks like Rogers fucking sabotaged McCarthy. It, it part of me wonders that. He wanted him gone, so you know what? I, there is something in the back of my mind. Who the hell knows? Oh, um, I, you know, I, I just I can't get over almost, that one. It, it's almost hard to to fathom, but because going back to Philbin again, you know, he wasn't much of a, co- a head coach at all. You know, Miami. Well, it was his first stint. You know, he didn't have much, this, that, the other, but all these things. Some guys aren't built to be head coaches. Yeah. You no, know? and. So it's just all these things, and it just they, – they, I'd really love to be a fly on the wall, you know, not even um, before, after Arizona, but like basically midseason at the bye with, with, with the upper guys to just know what they're thinking about McCarthy. Because, again, they freaking fired him while they still technically had a chance to make the playoffs. They, they, they lost to a really bad team, but that is just stunning. It's either some – preemptive savvy move by M- Murphy stupidity or McCarthy was just that far gone with the team. And I, I don't know what, where the hell it is. You know what I mean? The team was that far gone. Uh, really? Like I said, losing against Arizona was inexcusable. I don't even care what the scenario was. And in our situation, there's no excuse for it. Okay. Read um, me this. What if, um, you know, they canned him or whatever. And then um, what if Philbin, Coach, and they lost Arizona with Philbin. That's kind of a hard comparison because. <laughs> but what does it mean? I hear what you're saying, but what does it mean? Is it inexcusable for Philbin? Are you saying that McCarthy, that was his first game that Philbin coached? No, I'm just saying, like, well, let me try and put it this way. It's like, you know, you can't lose to that team because they're one of the worst teams in the league. Blah, 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 right? Well, I guess a better way to put it would be, say, McCarthy lost to a really shitty team, right? Yeah. Not the worst in the league, but a shitty team. And then they canned him. And then the next week, Packers played Arizona with Philbin at the helm, and we lost to them. What would that mean about Philbin? Uh, that's Do you know what I mean? Really good question. Do you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I, I'm going back to. They really wanted McCarthy gone. There really was, and and maybe reading even more into the Winston Moss thing, because Winston Moss was his boy. He was his um, assistant head coach and all this stuff, and he seems to be a real turd. Well, and, he, there's a reason why he was not allowed to And Phil uh, McCann, have Phil any McCann press conferences. Like a day after, remember? Right. There's a reason why this team had no press conferences or set up interviews with him all year. He's just an odd, odd duck. Weird. I mean, I get that, but it's just so maybe again, where I'm, where I guess I'm kind of headed with all this is maybe McCarthy was the quote unquote cancer that was just killing this team on a variety of different levels. Uh, that's not the right word to use, but it was untenable is the word I'm looking at. It was just simply untenable with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, I kind of look at it like, um, it, in, in in life today, uh, you know, the biggest uh, thing that I can think of at the top of my head is when couples are are having a tumultuous relationship, the, the best thing that they think they should do is have a child, you know, um, mm. and they go and have a child. And then obviously it doesn't improve things this off season. You could kind of correlate things, you know, they readjusted the front office. They got rid of, uh, you know, Ted Thompson, uh, brought in Goot, uh, brought in a new defensive coordinator, uh, pretty much overhauled the offensive staff and things did not work out. You but know? did they overhaul the offensive staff? No, it didn't. Uh, this is a complete failure. Um, so there's and a that, why... to your point that I would, that does point. I assume this is where you're going, but this does yes. go back more to, to McCarthy because oh, I'm going to bring in Philbin, his good old boy. I hate to say it, but his good old yes. boy, right? Now, let's call yep. it what it is. Yep. And he said, I'm going to take a scrub brush to the offense. Horseshit. Hmm. Now, Rodgers got hurt with his knee. How bad was that really? It's a very, this is just a very, very, very interesting season. You know, 30 years from now or 10 years from now or whatever, we get all the details about what really happened with the season. Yep. It's going to be fascinating. Because there's just lots of weird, just strange things that maybe just 
it's like a perfect storm or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it just, I think you're right. I think it just kind of – the perfect storm just culminated against Arizona. And I think yeah. Murphy set him up for it. That's the thing. And that's – with his stupid system or his stupid reporting structure, and he let McCarthy pick the, the GM, uh, have influence so, on that, and then he let – oh, it's just – so are you saying that we have two people on this team that are that were purposely trying to destroy this season to get rid of a head coach? You're saying Mark um, Murphy and Aaron Rodgers. No, I, that's a, okay. That's a good question. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is Mark Murphy, I don't think he's smart enough to know that the system that he set up was just doomed to fail. No, because he believes it's 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 a, it's the way to, get, yeah. to succeed. That's what, and that's and, and that's like I said, that's part of the problem. If he looks at that and says this is the way to do it, that's the problem right there that he thinks that's the right way. Now, oh, that's that's the, that's what came out of his press conference in the week uh, Monday was yeah. this is the way that I feel we are going to be best set up to to succeed. Yeah. Is I'm going to be able to hire the head, next head coach, Phil, or uh, excuse me, Goot will have a say in it, but I am the one that's going to make that final decision. Yeah. And then to your point about Rodgers, I don't know if Rodgers necessarily like sabotaged him, but yeah. well, you read these articles like an SI, remember that came out and then yeah. in something else where it's like, it's, you know, there's so much crap going on behind the scenes and McCarthy and Rodgers are, are like in this, you know, competition to see who can call the best play and all that. And I'm going, what the fuck is this? <laughs> this I think is... you had... You had two – in that locker room, you had two different teams. You had the team that um, obviously did not support McCarthy and the regime, and you had the other team that did. And it all all kind of just – Crumbled down. Crumbled down from there. Because once the the locker room crumbles – your whole team falters. It, it's it's tried and true that happens year after year after year in all professional sports. When your locker room, uh, you know, um, separates or, or fractures or whatever, the team typically goes down the hill. Do you with it. do you remember what that SI article did say though? It was talking about how like it was they were so like, and this was more so even under Ted, where it was like it was so tight, and, you know, you couldn't do anything. They wouldn't allow people to wear hat, you know, hats backwards on the sidelines, mm-hmm. and that's another fault that Murphy has is that he didn't shit can Thompson soon enough. He missed him by two mm-hmm. years. Right. At least two years. Right. And I again I don't under with Ted, what is he he's like head scout now? Uh what what is I so they, he's not a GM, but they're gonna let him I don't understand that either. That's like a little microcosm of his stupid triangle or a quadrilateral authority too. Is like, well, you can't be a GM anymore. You really, you're, you're you're past your prime. You know, you probably shouldn't be doing any of this anymore. But we'll give you a little office down the way or something. What? Right. You know what? Mm-hmm. And and he was and it, it, apparently, Gutekunst or not Gutekunst, uh, Murphy and Thompson were both trying to get Russ Ball hired. They were like in the ball team. <laughs> right. So that does not inspire confidence with Murphy. I just don't. Maybe he'll we'll give him time. But the return, the returns are very poor. We need to see what happens this offseason. This offseason will tell the whole tale. Uh, if, if he somehow gives more power to Goot uh, in order to um, shape this team, then I will develop a little bit more uh respect for him i guess you could say um but if we continue to have everything go through mark murphy and i think elliot has touched on this a few point or a few times here and there about his uh high involvement in the title town district um you know then somebody who, called him that ribbon cutter that's how they right to him. <laughs> so so who's, you know with you can have title town which is a great addition to our city and to lambo uh but who's handling the team on the field because truly You know, um, teams are measured on the success, not the failures. They're measured off of the the success, and every team wants to win uh, the Super Bowl. So if we're continuously being told that we are a Super Bowl contending team, but we're not getting there because, you know, whether it was Ted Thompson not supplying us with enough talent or, you know, the coaching staff, just whatever. Well, I'll tell you what, if you look at it, the buck stops with Murphy. You know, it all kind of trickles down, but the buck stops with Murphy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And. Like I said, he missed. He was busy doing his sledding hills and doing all that kind of crap, and wasn't involved. And he missed Thompson. Like I said, by 
two years and whatnot, and then he was, and then apparently he was thinking about hiring Russell. It's just all these decisions are all these almost made decisions all look poor. They all look bad. They all look, he looks, he's not looking good, and I don't have faith. I hate to say it. He, yeah. this, this, the, the structure of this team is closer to what they were in the 70s and 80s, and remember how shit poor they were back then? Don't need to tell me twice. I mean, I didn't have to experience. That. I didn't experience. I have to experience that. Thank the Lord. But, well, but that's that's why you have to have clear lines of accountability. This whole, the whole like right. quadrilateral of authority, clear communication. It doesn't really matter. And that's the, that's really where I think um, you can't change too many things all at once. But you need to have clear lines of of accountability and authority. This is your job. You have to do it. If you don't do it, you're gone. Like that, th that has to be the rule. You can't say, well, we got these three new guys, and then you don't really know whose fault it is. That doesn't help. So, I mean, uh, yeah. I, w w whether it's Philbin or somebody else, I, I just I think you have to be really uh, careful in, in the things you change well, so look, that the accountability still stays there. Let's just call it what it is. I mean, people can say, well, for the longest time, most successful teams, you know, they have a GM who has full control. Well, no shit, because it works, you know? You don't exactly. have you don't have non football guys getting involved, and that's why I keep going back to if Murphy. The problem I have more than anything is if if Murphy thinks that this is the correct way to do things, and he truly believes that, and history in the league, other teams, and even the Packers have shown, uh, no, the fact that he thinks it can be that that's a biggest problem itself, because he's right. the, the the word for that is delusional <laughs> I, I don't right. know what else to say you know i i would be really surprised because ever since ron wolf uh retired from the packers uh, he's been highly involved i mean the packers have actually gone back to him and you know kind of thrown th thrown th uh thrown things off the wall with him just to kind of get his take because obviously he had uh very good takes on stuff would you think that ron wolf would be contacting mark murphy and saying hey man this is really not the way to go. I mean, if you want to be successful, you might believe this is the way, but I can tell you through experience, it's not going to work. You would think, but also never underestimate somebody who is power hungry and, you know, wants to, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I, I would hope that the, the hunger for power includes having some Super Bowl wins. But. Right. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, yeah, if if all this, you know, if all this shit we're going through now ends up with a couple Super Bowl wins in the near future, I'll eat crow. But uh, it's... Yeah, well, I mean, as long as... I really think that, I mean, if they're making moves and they're they're holding people accountable, I think this will, this can the, the ship can be corrected. I And, uh, you know, whether that was McCarthy... I mean, uh, it, whether it was his fault or his responsibility, it's, you know, they said it's your responsibility, you're out. And now we take it from there. And uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, what, what, what do you guys predict for next week? For a win or loss or just whatever? Yeah. Like, what's your prediction? To be honest with you, I have no idea. Um, I think every single game here on out could be anything. I think it could be close game, win, loss, blowout, either way. I, I, I honestly just, I have no idea because the 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 mentality of this team could still be pretty fragile. I mean, say they get down fourteen nothing next week, they might just shit the bed and lose forty one nothing. They might get down fourteen nothing and say bullshit. This is the Bears tie it up, win a close game. They might roar out. You know what I mean? I could see it going any way. I really could. Um, and yeah, part of it, and part of it's on the injury front too. I mean, if they got more injuries. On no. the offensive line and even the defense like they're at, I mean, they are gashed, you know. Um, that ain't going to help. So if any guys are out, but I could see anything, and I mean anything. If I had to pick one, though, I would pick, to be honest, next week I'd probably pick a close win. Um, Don't forget the opponent that we're playing. Uh, the Bears right now, it is about six minutes left in the second quarter. Mm -hmm. The Rams have three points and 68 yards of total offense against this Bears defense. This defense mm -hmm. is proving itself to be Super Bowl worthy this year. Uh, not in the future because we What's don't the score of the game, though? Six to three Bears. <laughs> no, I hear you. But, I mean, they have uh, – this is just – I'm a big statistics guy. Uh, and, and the Rams right now have four first downs. Uh, they're one for four on third down. 
18 plays, 68 total yards. Four is this at, at Rams or at Chicago? This is in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sure the weather is playing a role into it. I, I'm, um, it's 30 degrees, so it's not too bad. Yeah. No, Here's a question. Fine. Here's a question for you. This is more just uh, um, not the right word. Sorry, but uh, would you rather have an all-world offense or an all-world defense? Me personally, I would rather have an all-world defense. Uh, I would. I would take a 10 out of 10. Yes. What about you, Elliot? No. Really? <laughs> no, you got to get points on the board. I mean, yeah, it's great that uh, they only held the Rams to three points, but they also only scored six. And, and yeah, at... that's that's enough to win the game if the game ends right now, but it's not over yet. Yeah, I look at it this way, I guess. And, you know, I'll say nine times out of ten, if you have an all-world defense, you may not have the best offense, but if you have we'll call it just a competent offense, you're going to win, especially when it gets to playoff time and stuff like that. Usually, usually in the playoffs, the great defenses are the ones that, that make it, right? You know, people say that all the time. I I don't know about that. 2016, 2016, the Denver Broncos with Peyton yeah. Manning, who couldn't even throw a ball 10 yards, won yep. a Super Bowl. You yep. don't win a Super Bowl without a solid, stout defense like the, the Broncos had that year. And the and Packers the defense, defense the 10, 000, 2010 was fucking awesome. It was. It was injured a, like hell, but it was awesome. But we also had a, a, you know, we were the best of both worlds there. We had a great offense and a great defense. Right. It's, right. That's that's the, obviously the the uh, epitome of what you want. That's the, yeah. you know, but that was never, that's typically not going to happen in this day and age just because of uh, free agency and the salary cap. Right. And especially right. the, the situation we're in where we're paying our quarterback roughly 17% of our salary cap in, in a year's salary. Yeah. And looking back to the Packers' losses to the Giants in 2000, uh, was it 2007 and 2011? Um, I mean, they had they had decent offenses with Eli Manning, but they had that those incredible defenses, and both of those beat New England. Right. But you know how they did it? This is the key. You have four down linemen that can get consistent pressure, and you can play the, the, the other seven defenders – the way that you want, but you only have to worry about if those four get into the quarterback. And that was why the Giants could uh, beat the Patriots. And that's why. And they destroyed us in that 2011. Remember that divisional game? God, I was there. Yeah, it wasn't even close. That was embarrassing. Man, it wasn't even close. But if you can get pressure with the least amount of guys, you're going to be pretty good. And you can beat a lot of quarterbacks that way. Good quarterbacks. I hear you. So to to end things on a uh, lighter note, mm-hmm. uh, did you guys hear about the the, the national anthem? I did no. not. What happened? So they were originally supposed to have some country singer come in to to do the Star Spangled Banner, but uh, he he couldn't make it for some reason, and so they had Frank Herman's come in. You know who he is, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yep, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I mean, everybody pretty oh, much knows. Oh, cool. Who he like, is. Uh, let me be frank. Productions. Never, yes. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Except he, except he forgot the words oh, partway no. in. Are you what? serious? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, but you know what? I mean, I think he was able to. He can make fun of himself, and he, you know, he finished strong, right? But, uh, but I did not know that. Yeah, in the middle, he just kind of went la 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 la. la. (laughs) Oh my god, that's awesome. And uh, and it was and it was funny. So, uh, I I mean, I'm sure I'm sure everybody's gonna see that video a thousand times tomorrow. But uh, we should throw that up too. It was. uh, I did not know that. Yes, it was pretty good. And like he's he's embarrassed, but like. You know what? Uh, what I I messaged on his on his Facebook, like you you uh, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, right? He had the opportunity, right. he took it. He didn't. He you know he got an eighty percent. He's just gonna have to go back out there again and do it again. So right. Sure. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. No, that is cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So it was good, you know, and and good for him for uh, you know making himself available on short notice like that. So I right. you know, no doubt. That's yeah, awesome. So I, so I hope that I hope the quadrilateral of authority uh, takes him back again. <laughs> it's a triangle of authority right now. Tra- tra- trapezoid of authority, um, polygon of authority. Uh, I, I like you know, polygon of authority. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely getting past Andy's bedtime. He's starting to recite. <laughs> nice, you guys are so silly. Go to bed, Andy. No, I, my alarm's going off, but it's for my meds. It's not my bedtime. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> Take your meds. Go to bed. Yeah. Well, Take I got two alarms up. on those suckers, man. I have like an alarm and then a backup. So trust me. So I, I, I didn't give my prediction. I didn't hear yours, Jeremy. But uh, I think uh, that for the Bears game, I, I think we're going to lose. But I think it'll be close. Yeah, I'm thinking something like a 23 to 17. Uh, yeah, that sounds, that sounds pretty reasonable. Uh, I'm going to call 23 to 17 with the Packers win. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. That's, that's good. We could, we could probably keep track of that. <laughs> now, now, I mean, Rogers, Rogers owns the Bears, and he even owns them in Chicago, Chicago or wherever. So, and never underestimate, even though they're basically out of everything, Rogers yeah. ain't no dummy. And even if he can turn on the uh, Superman switch and it's too late, he knows what the Bears mean to the Packers and all that kind of stuff, too. So I think um, – I don't think he's going to light them up, but I think 23-17 could definitely be possible. Yeah. But here's, here's the difference. I mean, we got to have a relatively healthy offensive line. Next. Yeah, it's troublesome. Khalil not gonna... Mack, that's all oh, I got to say. Oh, God. Just right. tell Philbin, be like, look, you're going to have to give him some help, all right? And don't put yeah. Jimmy Graham over there. Put nope. somebody else better. If you have 60 plays in the game, Mercedes Lewis should be playing 60 games at right tackle. Wow. <laughs> Mercedes at right tackle. Okay. Um, yeah. I, extra that would, blocker. <laughs> that would be an, I'll tell you yeah. what, that's one of those interesting things that McCarthy never gave his offensive line help. Let's see, like ever. I mean, Philbin. Right. I'll never forget when they played Seattle mm-hmm. um, in 2012. This is a fail Mary game, actually. Mm-hmm. I was watching it, and I think Rodgers got sacked seven times in the first half. And uh, was it uh, Bruce Irvin was like a rookie that year. And he, Brian Belaga gave up four himself. And McCarthy gave them, gave him no help at all. I remember watching that game going, and it, it was just like, that was one of those McCarthy things where he was like, no matter what happened, he was never going to do it. And he was just getting beat repeatedly, repeatedly, right. repeatedly. And Bulaga went down, and Derek Sherrod placed him, and then he gave up that safety. And then the game just went down the tubes. That's right, Derek Sherrod. Holy shit. The amount of first-round misses. On, right, that's a whole other show. So, All right, 23-17, go Petco. Go, go Petco. Petco. Podcast, podcast. Chair. I know, right?